Inside his kitchen, Russell was using some leftover parts from some already dead corpses he had already killed cutting them up. Perfect. Just then, his son Jock came in. Hey, Dad, I saw this raven fly by and trying to kill it, but it got away and it dropped this piece of paper. Let me see. Russell then read the invite. Jack, do me a favor and get me the biggest chainsaw we have. Why? Uncle Murdoch has finally gotten his hands on Damon Albarn and wants us to help him kill him. Really? Yes, now go get it. Okay. On a snowy mountain, the band was driving to a hotel where Murdoch had given everyone a job to watch the place during the off-season while the owner was away. Well, we finally made it. I still can't believe you got us all jobs at this place without even asking us. Hey, there were plenty for us, so I thought this could help with paying our overdue bills. Actually, I think you mean your overdue bills. Whatever. Finally, they all made it to the hotel, where they met the owner, who was an old man named Mr. Drake. I thank you all so much for doing this. The last group of people I hired didn't really last very long. What do you mean? Well, you see, this place is, well, may or may not be haunted. Haunted? Well, as long as I'm here and no ghosts come for the kids, then I'm good. Oh, don't worry about that, but the ghosts may drive you insane. Insane? Ha, yeah, right. I should also mention they ended up killing each other. What? Oh, look at the time. I must be going. Take good care. And with that, Mr. Drake left, leaving everyone concerned. Do you all think we should be watching this place? Of course, that's what we came here to do, after all. And besides, this gives me plenty of time to start working on writing songs for our next album. Well, okay, the kids and I are going to settle in. The next day, Murdoch was busy at work but was having trouble coming up with ideas. Ugh, this is frustrating. Maybe I could be of help, Murdoch. In the corner of the room was an old lady, but this is no ordinary old lady. This was Moonflower. Moonflower? What are you doing here? And how? You're dead! I came to give you advice on what to come up with, but there is only one thing you should do in order to receive it. You must kill Izzy, the children, and your bandmates. What? But you said that Izzy was the one before you died. Heck, she even helped me with caring for your ashes. And also, you tried to kill Tootie yourself, but said he was too pure to die. Look, you either kill them or don't receive the advice. Okay. Murdoch got an axe and went to the room where Tootie was. Oh, Stuart! Yes, Murdoch? What are you doing with that axe? Murdoch then ran at Tootie with the axe, but Tootie ran before he could get chopped. He found the bat laying around and picked it up. Stay away from me, Murdoch! Give me the bat, Stuart! Give me the bat! You've already gone insane? Murdoch was about to get close when suddenly, Babe, what are you doing? Down the stairs were Izzy and the creatures. Daddy? It's okay, kiddo. Murdoch was just... I was just playing around with him. Okay. The following day, Tootie sat in his room thinking about what just happened yesterday when Murdoch went insane and tried to kill him. I don't think I'm safe here. Of course you're not. You don't want Murdoch to kill you, do you? In the corner of the room was Jimmy Manson, who Tootie was surprised to see. Jimmy Manson? But how? Didn't you die a few years ago? Let's not talk about that. But I just thought I'd come and tell you that if you don't want Murdoch to kill you, then you gotta kill him first before he kills you. Are you sure? Yes, now what are you waiting for? Go kill him first. Later, Noodle was walking down the hall when she saw 2D strangling Murdoch. 2D, what are you doing? Noodle, I was just... But before he can explain, Noodle ran off to a different room to think about what she saw. They've already gone insane and are trying to kill each other. I gotta do something. Yes, and I have just the idea. Mr. Kuzo? Standing in front of the room was Noodle's old mentor, Mr. Kuzo. I know what you're thinking, but in order to stop them, you must kill them both. What? I can't do that. Murdoch has always been like a weird uncle to me, and 2D is like a, the older brother I never had. They're my family. It's either that or die. Well, if you insist. Meanwhile, the creatures were looking around the hotel when they all spotted something down the hall, which were twin girls. Come play with us. Uh, no thanks. I think we're good. Suddenly, the hall became dark, then light again, where this time the twins were found dead in the hall, laying in a pool of their own blood. This made the kids scream and run to the room where Izzy happened to be. What happened? We, we saw twins! Yeah, they told us to come play with them. Then the lights went out. Then the lights came back on. They were dead. Are you sure you didn't just imagine it? 
We saw what we saw, Mom. Jeff said Russell came in the room. Izzy, you might want to come see this. What's wrong? Later, the two went down to the lobby where Tootie, Murdoch, and Noodle were ready to attack each other. Guys, snap out of it! The three turned to them and started to chase them in the halls where Russell and Izzy got separated. Russell ran to a room locking the door behind him. Aw, oh, man, I don't know what to do. You gotta kill them, Russ. Dell? In the room was Russell's old friend, Dell. Hey, so you gotta do it? Dell, how? Oh, right, I was taken from you by the Grim Reaper, but hey... I'm in the afterlife now, and I say you kill them before they kill you, and then kill Izzy and the kids. Dell, I can't kill my friends and the children, one of whom who is my son, who could have been your godchild. Well, it's kill them or not your choice. Dell then disappeared, leaving Russell to make a decision. Should he kill his bandmates or not? Russell looked around the room where he saw a knife hanging on the wall. Meanwhile, Izzy was hiding in a different room when there was a knock at the door. Izzy, I know you're in there. Come on out. Izzy didn't answer. Murdoch took his axe and started chopping down the door and made a hole. Here's Johnny! Izzy screamed, but then she found a window and quickly ran to it and tried to climb out of it. Murdoch managed to unlock the door, but Izzy kicked him in the face. Izzy went outside to where it was snowing, then ran to an open window. Leo! Leo started went to the window. Mom? Leo, I need you and the others to come down before your father and your uncles and aunt kill you. Okay, let's go, guys. One by one, each of them climbed out the window. When Blue was the last, she looked down. Blue, come on. I don't want to. It's too high. Just then, her dad came into the room. Hey, kiddo, there you are. Come to daddy. Blue screamed and looked down with no choice. She jumped out the window and Izzy caught her. Then Russell came. Russell, think. Izzy noticed a knife in his hand. No, not you too. Sorry, Izzy, but what choice do I have? Izzy and the creatures started to run until they found the maze next to the hotel where they ran and hid. Each bandmare searched for hours and hours looking for them until they couldn't keep looking and were getting cold. Later, they all reunited and spent the night in the car until next morning. Dad? Mom? Dad? Izzy turned a corner into the maze and gasped in shock at the sight of frozen dead bodies of her boyfriend and his bandmates. Mom? Children, don't look! Why not? Ah! Dad! What happened to them? I'm afraid they've frozen to death. But we can save them, can we? I'm afraid not. Come on, children, we must leave this horrible place. Oh, okay. Bye, Dad. And with that, Izzy drove off with the kids, leaving behind the terrible experience of almost dying when her friends saw the ghost of those who died and forced them to kill.